gloves, good R rubber nitrile. I don't know what they are. Uh, look up Fixter. I mean, these things are thick as heck, and they don't rip. Like, hardly ever do they rip. You can take them off after you're doing your job, spray a little contact cleaner or brake clean on them, wash them all, and go back, right back to wearing them. Uh, I know all the other nitro gloves you get from O'Reilly's and all that, once you put brake clean on it, it starts deteriorating the, uh, the gloves. We use a lot of nitrile and rubber gloves and uh, wireline because we didn't like getting our hands dirty. But uh, I'll, uh, I'll get a picture and insert it here, but. I'm telling y'all, get y'all some thickster gloves. Uh, they're amazing. What's up, folks? Uh, figured I'd kind of explain what I did to get to this point for people that may want to do this on their own. Uh, basically, I had disc brakes. It's a little different with drums, but with disc brakes, it takes a number eight, three quarter. You break these off or break them loose, pull them out, and pull your brakes off. Now, the brakes have these little clips that hold them in. Oh, I'm gonna pull one out. Just so you can see exactly how it comes out. And it goes back in the same way. I'm trying to do this one-handed and film. Anyway, they, uh, they go back in the same way. Just kind of sit down in there. That holds your brake pads in place. Once you get that off, you're gonna take, you're gonna have a, a tang washer. And this nut right here. This nut takes a two and a half inch socket. You can buy an actual uh, axle nut socket. I just picked this. Oh, I picked this one up. It was cheaper. So uh, it is a three quarter though. So you got to get a three quarter to half reducer to go on your breaker bar and your uh, torque wrench. So you pop these off. This I like to leave my tangs on the inside bent in that way you have an idea of where it should be uh, once you get that off you pull this off and then there's a washer right here pop both of them off and then you can pull your bearing out uh, or your your hub assembly out the front bearing will generally pop loose real easy you can pull it out lay it down and in the time lapse you can see they have an actual uh, tool that you can use to pop your inner bearing and seal out. I use a brass punch. Uh, well, when you're popping that out, you can use a regular punch. Uh, when you're putting it back in, you can uh, use a piece of wood or a brass punch. Uh, it's not gonna hurt it. Once you get your, oh, on the seal, if you look at the seal, one side will say oil side. You want to make sure that's facing in this way towards where all your oil is. Once you get that done, you're, you know, you get them back installed. All this is off. Leave this out. Uh, you're going to set your hub back in. And it may take some finagling. If you've seen in the time lapse, I, I run a little oil where the bearing goes and a little oil 
where the seal is and I also put a little oil on the seal itself it just slides back it tends to slide back on there a lot easier uh, if not if you're trying to put it on dry it tends to give you some issues uh, but once you have everything off you want to make sure you clean your hub the inside of your hub real good you don't want to put dirty stuff back on when you're putting new bearings on dirt gets in the bearings wears the bearings out you're going to be doing this all over again uh in the time lapse you can see i use a pressure washer that's just because i have one available if you don't have one available you're going to want to use it's probably going to take you about two cases of brake clean uh for the whole job now that's cleaning your hub you know also you want to clean your shaft real good uh once that's done put your bearing seal in put it back on now once you have that on then you can put this front seal in and uh put your washer on your nut on this nut right here you're gonna want to seat at 100 foot pounds and while you're seating it with the torque wrench you want to turn it while you're seating it it's a little easier if you have two people uh it's just me so i do it myself uh yeah you just want to make sure you're kind of turning in a little bit while you're seating it uh, once you have it seated you want to back it off uh the spec is is like you know when it's when you back it off you get it to where it's just barely tight and back it off a quarter but if you're using your existing tang washer your uh your little two little teeth right here will match should match up so as you can see they don't match so it's right there and that's it you don't want to leave this inside tight uh, once that's done you will put this nut on So with this nut, you're gonna tighten it. Uh, you're gonna run it in. And then you're gonna tighten this one. Uh, you're gonna torque it. Uh, the specs on it are 100 to 150. I'll go to about 145, 150. Uh, I go to the high side. Now, what you do wanna make sure is when you're tightening this one, you don't want the back to move. You want it to stay. As you can see, you know, you want the back to stay where it is, and then you're going to torque this one down. Torque it to 150. Once that's done, you're going to take your punch and your, uh, your hammer, and this is one of the ones that were knocked down. As you can see, I'm not going to be able to use that one again. Well, I might. I still have to torque this down, but if... If you can't use the same one that was facing this way, just go to a next one. Uh, all you need is two on this uh, nut right here once you get it torqued. Once that's done, uh, I will put my Valcrum cover back on. Or no, I'm sorry. Once this is done, I will put my brakes back on. Run my bolts back through, make sure all that's good, and then make sure everything rolls good. Uh, once that's done, I'll put my Valcrum cover oil cap back on and fill her up with oil. When you're filling her up with oil, you just want to roll it. That way, that oil can get into all the bearings and everything. And it's going to take you probably five or ten minutes. You know, fill it up. It'll come up to the level line. Roll it a little bit, your oil will go down, the oil level will go down, fill it back up. You just keep doing that until you get it to the uh, level mark, and it stays at the level mark. Once that's done, put your uh, wheels back on, tighten your wheels down, uh, torque your wheels also. Please make sure you torque your wheel when you get done, and then after you drive, 50, 75 miles, stop, get your torque wrench, uh, keep one with you, get your torque wrench out, retorque your wheels, because lug nuts will come loose. I've had that happen to me on a work trailer. 
uh, got back to the shop and well the trailer had had a tire change at the shop and I didn't know about it uh, got back to the shop after using that trailer checked it or looked at it and noticed all the lug nuts were loose so uh, yeah make sure you you know torque your wheels or to torque your lug nuts drive it about 50 75 miles and then just pull over and hop out recheck it real quick and then uh, you're good to go I think that's about it. Uh, I'll list some of the tools you need in the description, and I'll list the bearing numbers, <coughs> the race numbers, if you want to do races also. I'll list the, uh, the number for the seal. That way, anyone that sees this or wants to know will know what parts they need. Uh, and this will work on, I think, a 10 to 15 or 12 to 15K axle, I believe. Uh, if you have a 10K or 85 or 7, obviously you're going to need a different part number. Uh, you'll just have to look that up or call the trailer place and they'll be able to tell you. But I got to get this finished up. It's starting to rain on me. So we'll holler at y'all later, guys. Also, don't use uh, brake clean cleaning this. Whether you have the Valcrum or you have your regular standard Dexter uh, oil cap. If you use brake clean, you'll end up clouding up the glass or plastic. So, soap and water will get it clean. Uh, even you know, even if it's real dirty, it'll generally clean up real nice. But yeah, don't use brake clean, or you won't be able to see your oil level. We're done. Uh, make sure you check what type of hubs was you got, uh, the size of wheel you got. Uh, that way you can get the correct torque specs. Uh, mine are 210 foot pound, 190 to 210. I like tighten everything to the high side. So we're done though. So uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's about it. So. Y'all got any questions? Drop them in the comments. I'll get them answered. I'll let y'all later. Gotten too lazy to make multiple trips over to the shop. <laughs> over there, so. 
why not use the tractor? <laughs>